friends! And for those of you who are new here, welcome to my channel where I grace ambitious women with all things self-love. Today we're going to talk about what to do when life throws you a curveball that rocks you like you've never felt. We're not only going to look at what to do about it, but we're also going to explore the few important lessons that I learned on my particular journey that I think applies to many. So if you want to hear what it's really like modeling while pregnant, keep watching. At the time I found out, my life was on a different trajectory. I didn't let it stop me, but in the long term, it helped me realize that my mission was empty. I started taking modeling more seriously in 2019, 2020, when my social media was starting to grow and I was getting a lot of opportunities and booking a lot of modeling jobs. I only started making content in the first place because I wanted to make money. When I began modeling, I loved being able to work with other creatives, but I didn't like handling things like payment negotiations and things of that nature. So that's why I ultimately decided to sign with an agency, but with that came a new mission. So with the new focus of reaching all the model checkpoints, I began to slowly build my portfolio. It was then in 2022 that I started to see more jobs coming in. It was at this point that I wanted to reach the next modeling milestone, which was to work internationally. I brought this goal to my agents, who are amazing, by the way, and they worked really hard to make this happen for me. So with that, it was April of 2022 that I got the news that I was signed with an agency in Milan. It was also April 2022 when I found out I was expecting Philip. I was shook, to say the least. I was like, God, seriously? What do I do? Do I go? Do I stay? Like, what? It took a lot of sitting and thinking and contemplating, but ultimately I decided to go. Working in Milan, I noticed a couple of things. One, there were a lot more models buying for jobs but there were also more jobs available and more frequent castings. Number two, I found that clients can be a lot meaner than in Canada. And three, Milan can get extremely hot in the summer. It was the last two realizations that made me question whether I wanted to continue modeling internationally or even full-time. It made me think about whether the sacrifices I had to make in the career were worth what I wanted to get out of it. Mind you, this included being away from my family for months at a time. And the answer was ultimately, not really. At the end of the day, I'm so grateful for all the opportunities I've been given, and I still love modeling. I just realized my calling is somewhat different. There's a common misconception that having a baby means you have to drop everything. Your goals, your dreams, your other titles. But this is something I refused and still refuse to believe. As humans, we naturally wear many hats. I'm considered a mother, a wife, a believer, an entrepreneur, a friend, a daughter. As life goes on, life happens. And with growth comes new challenges. It's up to us to either fall to the challenge or rise to it. And it may take some time to get used to, but that's okay. Because all good things take time. When I made it to Milan, there were two main challenges I faced because I was expecting. One, I was bloated almost all the time. It wasn't something I anticipated because it was actually the first time it ever happened to me. Apparently, it was a new symptom I developed and it came at the most inconvenient time. Something I learned about modeling in Europe is they're much less forgiving about weight than in Canada. So with that knowledge, I did what I could. To beat the bloat, I drank plenty of water and I did some light standing workouts to help mitigate my cute tummy. 
Speaking of drinking plenty of water, I was there in June, July, and Milan was hot. With this came challenge number two, trying not to pass out. The first job I landed was a last minute rush, and I felt I didn't have the time to eat lunch. Big mistake, huge. When I got on set, they had a basket of fruit and pastries full of onions, which give me migraines. So I went out on set with a banana to hold me down. By the time we got to shooting look number three, my body was done and I fainted. Some of the creators on set were so nice and they helped me regain some energy for the photographer ultimately said that I could leave for the day. It was from that day that I decided that every single meal, including snacks, were priority number one. I made myself a delicious breakfast and dinner every day and lunch when I wasn't on a set that provided one. And I made sure I had at least eight cups of water every day to beat the heat. I found a lot of it is being aware of your circumstances and not trying to deny them. When you acknowledge your current situation, it puts you in a much better position to calculate how you can thrive despite any obstacle that's thrown at you, or even how to step into an even better position. It all starts with mindset and then action. Speaking of taking action, I'm not going to go through this whole story and give you the impression that I did it on my own. My husband and our greater support system are truly the reason I was able to take such a huge step and not constantly be thinking in despair or fear about what I left behind. There are two powerful lessons that I learned from this. One being, don't be afraid to ask for help. When we're about to step into something great, we will often need help. This shouldn't be something we're ashamed of. I truly believe we are not meant to live this life alone. In the same way that you feel joy helping the people that you truly care about, you have to accept that the people who truly care about you will feel the same amount of joy and fulfillment by helping you. The second powerful realization that I've learned from this experience is don't be afraid to make your dreams known to your support system. There's a lot that can be said about moving in silence, but if you have a spouse or a partner, they will be a part of your journey. Some will be 100% in from the start. Others may need a little convincing because they're not able to see your vision as clearly as you do. Some may not be able to see your vision at all, but support you because it's you. And some, may not be part of your journey for very long. This is where having other family, friends, and supporters makes a huge difference. Sometimes we have a strong support system already built around us when we're starting to build something big, while other times we have to create that support system as we go along. Whatever the case may be, you have to realize that having a strong one will not only support a mindset of belief and success, but they will also help to lighten your load as you strive to realize your goals. In my case, I wasn't only a mother. I was juggling many things. And with that, I was on a destructive path to burnout. Not because I had too much to focus on, but because my systems sucked. Since high school, the way I worked through having many big focuses was to have big, stressful bursts of work, then having long rest periods afterwards. It was a cycle that kept going into my mid to late 20s. It was after this trip and giving birth to Philip that I realized that I had to stop this cycle of burnout. I realized it just wasn't serving me and would not produce good results long term. Taking care of everything else and then taking the time out to prioritize your self-care is not it. Especially if you find your responsibilities growing and growing, you need to find a way to fit self-care into your lifestyle consistently. It's the only way you'll find stability in managing your day-to-day -day happenings 
your relationships, and your overall well-being. Unfortunately, I learned this the hard way. Having months of burnout, physically and mentally, and having to recover while having a newborn. But the fact is, I'm glad I learned at all that this was no way to live. It helped me challenge my perfectionist all or nothing mindset, and it helped me become more present in my relationships with both others and myself. It's never too late to change the behaviors that aren't serving you, but it's your job to realize them and make the changes necessary to live a better life. If you're ready to take that next step, I suggest you watch this video that just popped up on your screen, which will help you to get unstuck and moving in your desired direction. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.